In addition to being a bassist, you also started a record company. Yeah, um, my bandmate Seth is in the audience and hopefully will be joining me on stage later to play some improvised music. But uh, we started a band in college. We went to Rhode Island School of Design. And we were all obsessed with this idea of do-it-yourself. Didn't want anyone to control how, we, how our art was presented. Yeah. So going back to Discord, um, there were a bunch of labels at the time when there was this amazing community of music that doesn't actually, I don't think, exist really anymore. Um, but there was a label in Chicago called Touch and Go, and there was a guy named Jonathan Ponerman that was started a label called Sub Pop, which everyone knows because of Nirvana. Great guy, amazing person. And there was a guy named Corey Rusk that did Touch and Go, but sort of these three labels were sort of the cornerstone of this indie music rock scene um, that was very small, and it was... It, it was amazing to grow up and be a part of it because we would get in a van and we would stay on people's floors and they would make dinner for us. And, and it wasn't so much about making it more as experiencing it. And, I mean, touring can get really dirty, though. Like, what do you do when a driver doesn't, like, change his underpants? You know, he just keeps switching uh, it around. Yes. Um, well, the, uh, we had... I know where you're going with this. Uh, we booked our own tours and, and um, one time the Sabiafav went to Europe and the first time we went there, we flew into England, and a friend of ours had recommended this driver named Jan. And Jan, Seth, where is Jan from? Scan he was in Scandinavia, and we were promised, Norway, thank you, and we were promised that he was a great driver. So we landed in London, this guy shows up, and he has no bags, no clothes, nothing. He just, and then he gets in the car, and he'd never driven before in his life. <laughs> he was a writer for a Norwegian newspaper. <laughs> And he started, and now imagine you fly over to London, sort of your first time, you're nervous, you don't know this guy. He shows up at the airport, and he, you're driving on the wrong side of the road, and then you're driving stick or manual on the wrong side. <laughs> so we get in the car, and this is before the Euro, and literally, we're in the parking lot at Heathrow in a van, and it's like, dig, 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 and I'm the worst control freak driver and I was like, dude, you gotta, you're moving over. So after a seven hour flight, I start qu very quickly learning how to drive stick shift. And then we drive to Germany and, and France and, and we get to the border and I didn't have a license. Um, so then Jan had to get in the driver's seat <laughs> and literally like chicken head it through <laughs> the border <laughs> as we sort of sputtered through and then I, and there was one time, I think, in Germany, we were so anxious because he was, just didn't know how to drive that we were screaming at him at the top of our lungs, like, pull over, just fucking pull over, and he wouldn't do it. And finally, we did, I, I can't remember what happened, but I, to, I digress. He had never learned how to shave, and it was quite traumatic, and he also had no clothes. So, Wait, at all? No, no clothing? Literally, he showed up in the clothes that he was going on a six-week tour with. Okay, so he had one set of clothing. You had the clothes, like your clothes, like this, okay, your, so this he had dress, dress and underwear on. and shoes. He wasn't shoes. naked. I just want to make sure and clarify, he wasn't nice naked. Dress. He wasn't naked. Thank you. And six weeks, you're in this dress. So at one point, we're like, dude, what are you doing with your underwear? And what he was doing was he was inverting it. He would wear it a week, <laughs> then take it off, and then wear the other side, and then wash it. <laughs> But that wasn't the worst part. The worst part is he didn't know how to shave. So he sort of had this stubble after a while. And then the last day we had a meeting with this potential label um, head and he showed up and he was just, he was like Carrie. It was just blood dripping down his face. <laughs> and we were like, John, what is going on with you? He's like, oh, I just shaved. <laughs> and he, he learned to shave. He unfortunately didn't have a dad that taught him how to do this, but he just dry raised it, dry cut it. <laughs> So it was just like a bobcat, just like mauled his face with this, it was horrible. And we're at this meeting where we're trying to like impress this label and this roadie comes out, just blood dripping down, it's horrible, yeah.